بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم احمده وصلى على رسول الكريم اما بعد فاعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصافات صفا فالزاجرات زجرا فالتاليات ذكرا ان الهكم لواحد رب السماوات والارض وما بينهما ورب المشارق ان زينا السماء الدنيا بزينه الكواكب وحفظا من كل شيطان مارد رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي اللهم ارنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وارنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه so today i want to talk about surah al-safat and one of the one of the lessons is about the shayateen and i think i will say some interesting things so the opposite of the shayateen is what the opposite in the christian ethos the opposite of satan is god meaning the christian world says god if there's god then there's satan if there's satan then there's god this is not what the islamic ethos teaches the opposite of satan is angels and the angels and the satans the evil jinns have had a very ancient historical rivalry as you know before even adam alayhi salatu wasalam was created there was a war between evil jinns and the angels and the angels came to earth and when they came to earth they had a jihad against the evil jinns and threw them into the ocean this is what the prophet said in an authentic narration so the rivalry of the jinns the evil jinns and the angels is an ancient rivalry so one of the most power place powerful places in the quran against the shayatin and jinn are the verses of the quran that talk about the angels okay so when you read the verses that regarding the angels they usually have a very powerful effect on the jinns this is also to be noted for example in the wind that we do if you notice that we have seven verses in the quran on shifa and so what did we do over there is we took the verses that have the word shifa and put them together to bring shifa in the same way if you bring the word of sakina together if you bring together the verses of quran that talk about sakina it will bring sakina so this is true with the quran at many levels and so one of the ways that this has an effect is if you're reading the verses of quran that have to do with angels they have a powerful effect on the shayateen and therefore you will notice that what that the when as soon as the verses of the angels or the verse the first five verses are read the very next topic after that is what it's the shayateen this will become clear to you in a second when i discuss some things so what are the angels doing i discussed one aspect of it but i want to discuss another aspect was safat safa and the angels how they line up in rows fazajirati zajra and when they shout with a shouting when they shout on the shayateen and the shayateen then run away in surah al-jinn allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the jinns what they do is they have certain places in the sky where they sit and they're able to hear the echoes of the angels kunna naq'udu ala maqa 
We sit in the places where we can hear. This is mentioned in other places in the Quran, including the surah, as you'll see in a second. So when the shayateen would sit there, they would be able to hear what the angels are saying. And what are the angels talking about? They're talking about what's happening in the world. What are they talking about? The angels have nothing. I'm saying this, you're going to get the point this way. And I'll give you another example from Shawli Allah Muhaddas Devi. The angels have nothing better to do than to talk about what human beings are doing on earth. But they're not going to talk about what's happening in Mars. There's nothing there. The angels are focused upon one spot in the entire creation of this realm, and that is the earth, what is happening. And so everything that's happening on earth is their concern. And so Shaulila Muhaddas Debi he says that once he was having kash, he was doing muraqaba, and he in his muraqaba was able to see the angels are talking about human beings on earth. But he couldn't tell what they're saying. He couldn't tell what they're saying. And then he said, okay. He said, and he was, then that raised a question in his mind. So this happened and it raised a question in his mind. He says, the question that raised in my mind is, do the angels speak our language? Which language do they speak? When they're up there talking about Lahul, because they're looking at Lahul Mahfuz, the book of destinies. And they're looking at what's happening on earth. They're looking at the book of destinies. And there, and, and so he says that I had this wish that I would be able to hear and understand what they're talking about. So Shaulila Muhaddas Devi Rahmatullah he writes in his Mukashifat in the book. He says that I had another gush, and this time I was able to hear the angels, what they're talking about. And of course, what is Shaulila most concerned about in his life? His most concern was the mission of Islam. So he asked them a question. He said, what will be the condition of the Muslims in the Indian subcontinent? Because Islam was coming new into this land and there were a lot of enemies. The Marhatta, Marhattas was a caste of Hindus who are today part of the RSS that are uh, torturing and terrorizing Muslims in India. But at that time, it was the Marhattas and the Khalifa of that time in India, Aranzeb, he was a very pious Muslim king, one of the pious ones. You know, he used to uh, write Quran and sell Quran or make shoes and sell shoes. That was his income as a king. And Shaulila Muhaddas Devi and his father helped him write the very, very famous fatawa. It was called Fatawa Alamgiri. Fatawa Alamgiri is a, one of the most important books in, in Hanafi fiqh that are close to the modern age, meaning within the last 300 years, but is extremely like, uh, very well done fatawas. So Shaulina was helping in that with the pious king. But anyway, the point I was trying to make is that Shaulina, his concern was what will happen to the Muslims of this region. So he asked the angels, and my only point here in the end is the angels and their concern with what? Human beings. They were, they're just as surprised today as they were surprised when Allah announced, I'm going to make a man on earth. Now they're surprised in a different way. They're surprised at what good we do and what harm we do. They're like, oh my God, this guy did so good. Oh my God, these people did so bad. See, it's, it's the same story. And they're doing du'as for the believers and sending curses to the people who are taking people away from the path. But the, the story that they're looking at, the film, the movie that they're watching, is what? Is the friends of Allah and what they're doing, and the friends of shaitan and what they're doing, and what's happening between the friends of shaitan and the friends of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, Shaulila Muhaddasiri, just to complete the secondary topic I raised, Shaulila Muhaddas Zabi he said, I asked the angels when I was second time in my Mukashifa, and I was able to ask the angels, what will happen to the Muslims in India? And the angels said, as long as three things happen, you'll be okay. He said, number one, they have to have the right education. Number two, 
they have to have the best weapons. And number three, they must have a good economy. Good economy. Where they feel Allah is feeding them. They know the earth is made to feed human beings. They have to feel this. And this is a very important topic for Shaulullah. He's written this about this in other places too. But he, anyway, the angels are concerned with what human beings are doing. So now, angels have an ancient rivalry with who? The shayateen. Before Adam. Now, because they have that ancient rivalry with shayateen, now they see man in the middle. Man's come in the middle. And man is the one now that will be standing against the shaitan. And so they're watching very carefully. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَالصَّافَةِ Safa When the angels line up. What does it mean that they line up? Sheikh Sha'rawi says, alayhi, The meaning of lining up means they're ready to take action. When they line up means that they're ready to go for one of the affairs given to them by Allah. They're ready to take an action. What is the action that is being referred to here? فَالزَّاجِرَاتِ zajra. Zajar means to yell and to shout. And so the angels, they will come to the shaitan and yell at him to make him run away. فَالزَّاجِرَاتِ zajra. And how will they yell at the shaitan? What is the, how do they do this? With what will they yell at the shaitan? This is Fazajirati Zajra has many meanings. This is one meaning that is connected to the subject of angels. Wasafati Safa Fazajirati Zajra. Zajra means to yell, to shake. Fazajirati Zajra. Fataliyati Dhikra. And they do tilawa of dhikr. How do they yell at them? They yell at them with the Dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَالصَّافَاتِ صَفَّةً فَالزَّاجِرَاتِ زَجْرَةً فَالتَّالِيَاتِ ذِكْرَةً And then very interestingly Allah says, وَإِنَّ إِلَاهَكُمْ لَوَاحِدٌ وَالصَّافَاتِ صَفَّةً فَالزَّاجِرَاتِ زَجْرَةً فَالتَّالِيَاتِ ذِكْرَةً ذِكْر is what? إِنَّا نَحْنُ نَذَّلْنَا الذِّكْرَةً we sent down the adhikr, which is Qur'an. وَإِنَّ لَهُ لَحَافِذُونَ And we are going to protect it. And وَالْقُرْآنِ وَالْذِي ذِكْر And the Qur'an that is adhikr. Adhikr is Qur'an. The greatest reminder is Qur'an. The greatest reminder was put in the heart of the Prophet So the Prophet is in complete remembrance of that ultimate Message. So, فَالتَّالِيَةِ ذِكْرَ And they read the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, some scholars say that angels cannot read Qur'an. They cannot what? But they can do other adhkar. They can say, subhanallah, alhamdulillah, Allahu akbar, la ilaha illallah. So either way, فَالتَّالِيَةِ ذِكْرَ The other meaning is that they're always doing the tasbih of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, how do they yell? They yell with Allahu Akbar. They yell with Subhanallah. They yell with Alhamdulillah. They yell at the shayateen with the dhikr of Allah. And this makes the shayateen what? Run away. And we know when you read Quran, shaitan runs away. We know when you give the adhan, the Prophet said shaitan runs away. So with the dhikr of Allah, the shaitan what? Runs away. This is connected with the angels in a different way, which I'll come back to in a second. But then Allah says, after mentioning four oaths, Allah mentions, وَالصَّافَةِ صَفَى Sorry, three. وَالصَّافَةِ صَفَى فَالزَّاجِرَاتِ زَجْرَى فَالتَّالِيَةِ ذِكْرَى إِنَّ إِلَاهَكُمْ لَوَاحِدٌ Indeed, your Rabb is wahid. Over here, Allah doesn't use the word ahad. Over here, Allah uses the word wahid. Your Rabb is one. Your Rabb is alone and one. What is the difference between one Ahad and Wahid? What is the difference? And the difference is that if I give you a pen, I say this is one pen. 
this is one pen, but it doesn't mean that they're not what? Others. Okay. It does not mean that they're others. If I give you, I say this is one pen, but, it, but if there is only one pen, if there's only what? One pen, then you say it's ahad. Then you say what? Ahad. When you say wahid, one, you mean it, the word wahid means one in the sense of the numerical word one. When you say ahad, you mean nothing but that exists. So Allah uses both the word wahid for himself. And Allah uses the word ahad for himself. Allah is wahid, one, the number one, with all of his attributes as one. There's no parts. Allah doesn't have parts. The other thing which is technical, but I'll mention it because I'm mentioning it here. Generally when there's a qasam with wa, you know, wal asri, wal fajri, write this. When there's a qasam with wa, it is many times followed with when the answer to the qasam, when Allah makes an oath, and then the answer to the oath, right? So Allah takes an oath, wal asr, inna al insana lafi khusr. It sometimes comes with the la of emphasis with it. So you'll find, for example, was safati safa, fazajirati zajra, fataliati dhikra, and then the answer, inna ilahakum la wahid. Indeed, your Rabb is one. Now, the topic continues back to the angels and the shayateen. I will give the simple translation for the first part and go into more details of the second part. Inna ilahakum la wahid rabbu samawati wal ardi wa ma baynahuma. Allah is the Rabb, the caretaker of the heavens and the earth, and whatever is in between them. Wa rabbu al masharik, and He is the Rabb of the of the east, where the sun rises. Now, why is this significant? And what is the link between this and the shayateen? Is this? I'll give you one example. And there's an interesting point here. When the sun is rising from the east, you're not allowed to what? You're not allowed to pray. Because what shaitan does is that shaitan stands where the sun is coming out. The Prophet said this. He, start, he stands where the, shaitan, where the sun is coming out and he lets the sun come out of his two, like the sun will rise between his two horns. And he will say, I am the Lord. Now for the jinn world, this is amazing. I will tell you why. But there's a funny point here that Allah is making also. And that is that you can pray again when? When can you pray again? When can you pray again? Once the sun is as long as his spear. As long as, as when he gets as tall as what? A spear. 15 minutes, 20 minutes, then you can what? Pray again. Because the shaitan is so small. If you want to know how small shaitan is, he's so small that he's less than a spear. Smaller than a spear. And once the sun rises above his head, right? And he's no longer the, the big one that from which the sun is coming out from, then he leaves. But why is this a big deal? Why is this a big, in the world of shayateen, why is this amazing? It is amazing because light that Allah created, light that Allah created, not the artificial light man created that blocks the real light. The light that Allah created hurts shaytan. The light Allah created hurts shaytan. I'm going to give you one of the reasons for that in just a second and explain something. So Allah says, وَرَبُّ الْمَشَارِكَ And Allah is the Rabb of the one who brings out the sun from the west. Not shaitan. Allah does it. Shaitan's fooling you guys. Allah is telling the jinns, Allah, this shaitan's trying to trick you to make you think that he's the one who's making this happen. Now, when is the sun rising from the west. When is it rising from the west? All the time. All the time. There's a new west, a new rising of the sun, what? 
all the time. So the shayateen are lined up. You go first, you go second, you go third, you fourth, fifth, sixth, like this. And they all stand there and the sun comes out and fooling the world of the jinns that, oh, look how powerful this man is. How powerful this jinn is. But shaytan is really very small. The jinns are very small. This is why the Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the jinn sits in your, the shaytan sits in your nose. In another hadith, the Prophet said, he pees in your ears. Right? If they're so gigantic, like they try to make themselves look then they wouldn't be able to pee in your ears. They're very small. And this is why Allah has hidden them, because they're very small. And if man was able to see them, we would kill them like we kill flies. You know, they'd be dead. <laughs> you make a fly, fly swatter for a jinn, and that's it. <laughs> that's right. And some people do that too. Some people will kill them like flies. But over here there's another point. The movie Exorcist, you've seen it? Yeah. Do you know why the director made that movie? He wanted to prove the existence of God. And the way he wanted to prove the existence of God is by proving that there is Satan. And if there is Satan, then there must be what? God. That was the intent of the director of the movie. The same argument is made here. That if you, if you know that black arts exist, black arts exist, if sorcery exists, Black magic exists, which people were more aware of back then. Even they're aware today, but they were more aware back then. That if these things exist, this is proof that Allah exists. So Allah says, Was Safati Saf, I swear by the angels that line up, and by their shouting at the shayati, and by their reading of the dhikr, was Safati Safa. Your Rabb is one. What is the proof he's one? That black arts exist. The shayateen exist. And the angels exist. The jinns know angels exist. And the jinns try to pretend like they're angels. The jinns pretend what? They're angels. And this is very famous for people that have looked into these subjects, like Rukia and stuff. They'll know that when people write magic, they'll sometimes write the names of the angels. They'll write the what? But it's actually the names of what? They'll make up some name for some angel and say, this is angel such and such. Or people say, I have a guardian angel that talks to me, etc., etc. So Allah is saying, no. The angels, they're on my side. I don't know what's on your side. But the angels, they're mine. وَالصَّافَاتِ صَفَى فَالزَّاجِرَاتِ زَجْرَى فَالتَّالِيَاتِ ذِكْرَى And this is why you'll notice the Safat, the Surah, its recitation, is like as if you're yelling. وَالصَّافَاتِ صَفَى فَالزَّاجِرَاتِ زَجْرَى You can't help it. Right? You can't help it, can you? It's like almost like you're yelling and you're reading dhikr. وَالصَّافَاتِ صَفَّ فَالزَّاجِرَاتِ زَجْرَ فَالتَّالِيَاتِ ذِكْرَ إِنَّ إِلَهَكُمْ لَوَاحِدٌ Oh, time's running out. Okay. I wanted to say a couple more things that are important. So let's do this quickly, inshallah. إِنَّ إِلَهَكُمْ لَوَاحِدٌ رَبُّ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَمَا بَيْنَهُمَا وَرَبُّ الْمُشَارِ now Allah makes a very interesting point. But you must know two words. Najam or Najum is what? Najum or Najam is stars. Najum one Najmi ida hawa. Najam is what? One Najmu wa Shajamu yes do that. Najam is stars. Kawakib are planets. Kawakib are what? Planets. Allah mentions the shining not of the stars, 
Allah mentions the shining of the planets. Inna ilahakum la wahid, Rabbul samawati wal ardi wa ma baynahuma wa Rabbul mashariq, inna zayyanna samaa dunya. Indeed, we have beautified the asama al dunya, the sama, the sky, or the galaxies of dunya, kawakib, by the beauty of the planets. And when you look at the sky, the most shining, shining stars, which looks like the most shining stars in the sky, are usually the planets. Venus and Mars and sometimes a few times a year five six seven planets will line up on the sky and you can see all of them one by one just a few months ago we had a day where I think six planets were all lined up Neptune Venus Jupiter Saturn and they're the most brightest in the sky because they're the closest and notice this right that these planets that a lot is talking about that are shining they're not very shiny when you close up, they're dark. But they shine like the moon because they're reflecting the light of the sun. Right? So the sun is that big that it is causing not only the moon to reflect light. Just like if we were sitting in Mars, we would see the earth what? Shine. Because the, the, the rays of the sun hit it so hard that it bounces back to the other side. So Allah is here talking about the beauty of not the stars, but the beauty of the planets. That when we look at them, they look so beautiful and shiny and big. They look bigger than the North Star. They bigger, look bigger than the biggest, most shiny star. The other point here is that how big is this universe? If Allah is using these words, Allah does this in Sutul Mulk as well as here. Allah says, وَلَقَدْ زَيَّنَّ السَّمَاءَ الدُّنْيَا السَّمَاءَ الدُّنْيَا is a terminology in Qur'an because it's used more than once. Sama, sky. Ad-dunya of the world. Meaning the dunya of the world is the whole observable universe as we can see it. That's the first one. All the galaxies, all the stars. This is just the first. This is السَّمَاءَ الدُّنْيَا it's not even as-sama al-ula, if you want to get very technical. It's not even called the first heaven. It's called the heavens of the dunya. Okay? And in Sutul Mulk, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna zayyanna sama al dunya bi masabiha. And indeed, we have made the, the sky of this dunya, what's around this dunya, made the sky masabiha with shining lamps. وَجَعَلْنَاهَا And we made them رَجُومًا لِلشَّيَاطِينَ And we made them a source to drive away the shayateen. We made them a source to what? Drive away the shayateen. And over there, the same thing is mentioned in Sutu Safat. That not only over there it's saying the shining stars are a source to drive away the shaytan. Over here it is saying the planets are also a source to drive away the shaytan. So one of the reasons the planets exist is to drive away shaitan. Now, why do the planets drive away shaitan? And why do the stars drive away shaitan? So now let me explain. Allah says, إِنَّا زَيَّنَّ السَّمَاءَ الدُّنْيَا بِزِينَةِ الْكَوَاكِبِ وَهِفْظًا مِّنْ كُلِّ شَيْطَانٍ مَارٍ And it is a protection from every shaitan that wants to go back and forth between the skies and come back. وَهِذَّمْ مِنْ كُلِّ شَيْطَانٍ مَارِدٍ لَا يَسَّمَّعُونَ إِلَّا الْمَلَاءِ الْأَعْلَى Okay, over here I want to mention something else that's very important before I finish. The Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the sky is creaking, making, making a creaking noise. You ever been in an apartment where you step on something and it makes a creaking noise? It reminds me, the first joke I read in the Arabic language, I was very small, and it was a part of our course, we had to, and one of them was a joke. 
And the joke was that a person was rented an apartment. And when he was in the apartment, everywhere he would put his feet, it would creak. Okay. So he thought I should tell the homeowner that this is, you know, creaking. Every time I step on it, the house is what? Making a creaking noise. So he went to the house owner and he said, you know, I'm renting this apartment. Everywhere I walk, the house is what? Creaking. He said, yeah, it's doing tasbih. Because the Prophet said the sky is what? Creaking. Making a noise, creaking. He said, yeah, I'm worried that it'll fall into sujood. Do you get it? I'm worried the house will fall into sujood. <laughs> it's creaking. <laughs> it's fine. It's doing tasbih, but it's going to fall into sujood. Anyway, that was like the first. Anyway, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, let me just finish this point and we'll finish it. وَلَقَدْ وَزَيَّنَّ السَّمَاءَ الدُّنِيَا بِزِينَةِ الْكَوَاكِبُ وَحِفْظًا مِنْ كُلِّ شَيْطَانٍ مَارٍ the, sh- the angels are all over the universe. Not an inch remains except an angel is doing tasbih there. And when they're doing tasbih there, so when something of the heavens, like meteoroids, or cosmos, or light, or the solar waves, or any of those things, they come towards the earth, they not only affect, well, they're there, but they affect the shaitan because of the dhikr of the angels. And another point here that I want to end with, inshallah, is as you know, shaitan said, khalaqtani min, you created me from huh? fire. So the mufassirin, they ask this question, that how come the fire is used to protect us when they are themselves created from fire. The, it's a long discussion, but the end result is this. The fire that shaitan has been created from is weaker. Is what? Weaker than the fire that's up there. And the proof of that is Allah saying, أَأَنْتُمْ أَشَدُّ خَلْقًا أَمِسَّ Are you a stronger creation? Meaning when the jinn is reading Quran, what will it mean? Are you a stronger fire than that? Or weaker? We created the sky to be stronger than you. So, أَأَنْتُمْ أَشَدُّ خَلْقًا أَمِ السَّمَاءِ بَنَاهَا رَفَعَ سَمْكَهَا فَصَوَّهَا Anyway, so shaitan's been created from fire. But shaitan's been created from a weaker fire, a more subtle fire than the normal fire that we see in the stars and the planets and so on and so forth. أَقُولُ قَوْلِ هَذَا أَسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهَ لِي وَلَكُمُ لِسَهَلِ السَّلِينَ وَالْسَلَامِ السَّلَامِ وَالْسَلَامِ